Tennessee Congressman and UFO enthusiast Tim Burchett went into a skiff at the Department of Defense to be briefed on much anticipated secret information about unidentified anomalous phenomena known as UAPs, including how the administration keeps tabs on them. On this UFO podcast, he signaled it was a letdown. Let's watch. Didn't really have any real hopes because that's what we're getting. I told somebody it's like um, all these guys are like, when I talk to them, they're like looking down the barrel of a 22 rifle. It's just very narrow and very straight. And they're honestly telling, I feel like they're telling the truth within their limited scope, but it is very compartmentalized. Whistleblower David Grush was not in attendance. When asked if people pulling the strings in the background are blocking info from coming out, this is what Burchett said. You know, since 1947, they've told us these things don't exist. And then now they tell us they do exist. And then, but now nobody can tell us where we can look to see if they see where they exist. You know, it's just, uh, it's like peeling off the layers of an onion. You get down and you get another layer. I think for a long time, it's been faceless names that have maybe tried to get this moved forward in the past, whereas now we do have yourself, uh, Representative Luna, and others actively trying to push this forward. So you're always going to be in the firing line of the, the social media world and the UFO fans as such. What what do you think you can do now with your colleagues to keep pushing forward? Well, we just keep pushing at our government level, but until somebody walks out of one of these... Um, uh, quasi-governmental businesses, which is which is where they're at, if they if if they even exist anymore, um, they're in these these businesses that so we don't have a we we can't get to them through FOIA. They're government funded contracts, but FOIA, of course, is Freedom of Information Act, where we can get a hold of. And what's going to have to happen is somebody's going to have to walk out with with material or physical evidence or something like that, or and um, and bring it forward. Burchett confirmed that the new speaker, Mike Johnson, is committed to moving forward investigating UAPs. Well, that's some good news to come out of this. It sounds like Tim Burchett is one of the few Congress people who's actually taking this problem seriously. I was heartened by that previous hearing that they had where a lot of the Congress people were very open minded about asking questions of the witnesses and what they had seen or what they had been privy to or heard from secondhand sources. But it seems like since then, the fervor has kind of died down and a lot of people have kind of forgotten about the UAP issue. They um, prepared for this hearing and then kind of just moved on. So very few people are involved, it seems, in continuing to investigate this, which is really a shame. Yeah, I think Tim Burchett has been very dedicated to this. I'm not surprised that the Department of Defense didn't show him anything that made him excited. I, I think of their perspective here. Would it be strategic or smart for them to show someone who's a UFO enthusiast who wants to tell the public about this what they have? I think he's right to say that any evidence the Department of Defense had doesn't exist anymore or it's located within a quasi-governmental organization. And I think that's why a lot of people, when they voted for Donald Trump, honestly did so because he talks about draining the swamp. A lot of the swamp is these quasi governmental organizations. Why is it that an elected member of Congress has less information than someone who was never elected? Our democracy is quite frankly in peril. When you have people who want to share information with the general public who call for a FOIA request, a member, an elected member of the, of the U.S. Congress is asking for a FOIA request to get information from the government. That is insane that we have quasi-governmental organizations with that much power and that much information that they're keeping secret from people we've elected, quite frankly. Right. One of the benefits of being a member of Congress is your ability to get access to some of this sensitive information because you have that clearance. You have the ability to go into the skiff, and yet repeatedly we see that members of Congress are stonewalled when they try to access this information, whether it's the UAPs, whether it was information regarding alleged bribery from the Biden family. They get into these situations where they basically have to beg the FBI or other government organizations to give them information that they're requesting, and in some cases even have to sue for it. And a lot of private citizens have found themselves over the years submitting these FOIA requests. The government is allowed to deny these requests for any number of reasons. They come up with the most ridiculous excuses. Sometimes they ask for ridiculous sums of payment to process the reports that they send out to people. 
And then inevitably, a lot of people get involved in these multi-year lawsuits to try to get this information to come up, come out. It's why there's so many uh, NGOs dedicated to helping submit and process FOIA requests because they know that average citizens, private citizens, often run into this brick wall. And so they just submit FOIA requests all day long, trying to get as much information as possible. It's one of the things that Judicial Watch, run by Tom Fitton, does so well, is getting these FOIA requests to actually be approved and processed by the government. Because otherwise, there's really no recourse for the average person to be able to get information that should be available to them from the government. And the UAP situation is just the latest example of that. Yeah, I think if Mike Johnson is genuinely dedicated to the UAP issue, Tim Burchett should push him to address how FOIA requests are financed, the personnel and resources it takes to get data and information for the people who request it should not be a burden to bear by the person who requests it. Many of the American people don't want this information to be secret in the first place. I know very few people who would vote for someone running for Congress or an elected position of power in the United States. Uh, very few people would, would vote for someone if they said they wouldn't share this information with the public. And so I think it's this paternalistic approach of we know better than all of you and we know what's better for you and what's best for the country and this information needs to be kept secret because it's a defense concern, it's a security concern. I really think that's not how our democracy was intended to function. I think it's just something a lot of people don't want to be a feature of our government, that it's really hard to get information about our government's processes. I think there's some kind of social contract we have uh, by living in and paying taxes in the United States that we should be allowed to know what our government's up to and what information they have about existential matters at that, UFOs and UAPs. Uh, and so I really would like to see members of Congress, Congress push more on this. Also, because that precedent for FOIA requests matters for more than just UAPs and UFO investigation. The government has been very successful as well in what essentially amounts to a propaganda campaign to discredit every individual who comes forward as a witness in the UAP uh, story. I mean, you have them calling these people crazy, leaking information to places like The Intercept to claim that they are suffering from mental health issues or that their PTSD is the reason that they're coming forward about UFOs and talking about this phenomena. And they've made it so that anyone who acknowledges that UAPs might be real is crazy. And that's a big reason why I think a big part of the American American populace is not tuned into this issue because they've done such a good job, the government has, that is, and the, their friends in the mainstream media have done a great job of making this an issue that is reserved for people who are crazy, people who have lost their mind, people who are conspiracy theorists. And if you approach this even open-mindedly by saying that either, uh, either scenario could be true, these things are maybe craft that belong to other countries with technology we don't understand yet, or they are the result of extraterrestrial beings coming into um, in, onto Earth. Either one uh, could be likely um, if you're someone who approaches this with an open mind, but even those people are discredited and degraded by the regime who doesn't want people to question this at all. They don't even want people to be asking about it. And that is so classic from our government um, trying to control what people think and what they say um, for the sake of being able to control them in other ways too. Yeah, it's definitely a common narrative in mainstream media by journalists who are supposed to look at issues pretty objectively, consider what information would be useful to the people. This idea that unbiased journalism somehow means you represent the views of the Democratic and Republican parties is, is a sick perspective, that the political parties in the United States should have that much influence over what the conversation is as to what the news is and what information we're sharing. As journalists, you're accountable to the American people, and it seems to be the consensus that the American people want in information from their government, especially in the case of UFOs and UAPs. And so it's unfortunate how much this establishment has controlled the conversation around something that's just a matter of human interest. And when I think about the common framing that you're either crazy or dumb, um, or naive or childlike, if you care about the idea of extraterrestrial life, of life beyond Earth, it's insane because most scientists and most people who think about this issue carefully can't imagine 
a universe that's as vast as the one we live in where there isn't life beyond our planet. And so I really think that should be at the heart of this conversation. But mainstream media is afraid to have that conversation at all. That's going to do it for us this week. Jess, it was great to be back with you. And I hear that you're going to be in town next week. So that's exciting. I will. I'll get to see Amber Duke in person. Can't wait. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we are now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Bye, and we'll see you next week. Bye, y'all.